Morris film circuit is now as well known as the product it depicts. From humble beginnings, with a miniature projector, it visited the showrooms of a few enthusiastic pioneers. This was later replaced with a full-sized silent machine, and in 1931, the circuit was one of the first to present advertising films with sound. Today, the blue and gold bands are seen all over the country, and a quarter of a million people are entertained yearly. How time flies. Do you remember the first silent film shooting a famous works? This was followed by quite an ambitious film entitled The Toiler's Reward, which stressed the value of happy, congenial workers allied to good workmanship to produce good cars. In the years following, up to 1931, several films were produced, typical among which were The Perils of Spurious Spares. Two cars and all was peace. and the introduction of the first hundred pound British car. These were all shown on the miniature machine which, after two years, was replaced with a full-sized silent projector. 1931, the Morris films change over to sound. No doubt several of you have visited the scenes of the triumphs of these two miners in Lakeland, where, in an indisputable manner, they demonstrated Morris car design as the very best. Climb straight up the mountainside. You can see in this picture the terrific gradient. Here we have even a better impression of the steepness of the climb. Hard put to it, both the two-seater and the saloon successfully completed the terrible climb under their own power. To see such a sight when on tour in the Lake District is a very pleasing contrast to the excitements of hill climbing.
A further vindication of Murray's engineering was the wonderful performance achieved by this 100-pound miner, which attained the marvellous figures of 100 miles an hour and 100 miles a gallon. Nineteen thirty two. That delightful film, Scotland Calling, emphasized the call of the open road and portrayed some of the gems of Scottish beauty. Surely nothing can beat these glorious Highland panoramas, memories of which will long remain. Our minds teem with thoughts that it is only because we have absolute faith in the reliability of our Morris we can come to these almost unbelievably charming wild parts and to the very full appreciate their untranscended beauty. A feature of this year's program was the introduction by the films of the Morris Tent. The worst hills in England had no terrors for these worthy representatives of the Morris factory. Amidst magnificent scenery, they were shown fairly reveling in their own power as they climbed hills which would have been too much for many a larger car. Incidentally, Many of these cars, although second-hand, are still capable of giving hundreds of miles of trouble-free service, provided you purchase them through a reliable dealer. The scintillating stream is uneven. The main pit bit of the climb is reached. And what a climb this is. As we watch, it seems almost vertical. And what a wonderful performance the two cars put up. Up, up they climb, seeming to cling to the hillside almost like flies on a wall. And right at the top of this severe pull, there is an acute hairpin bend. With wheels spinning and engines way in a reverie of power, the cars swing round the bend, up and ever up, never faltering for an instant. This is marvellous motoring. By now, the works at Cowley had become one of the sights of England. And most of the visitors of note to this country made a point of seeing how Morris cars were made. Some of the most interesting were the dark potentates from overseas dominions, outstanding amongst whom was the Emir of Katsina. Whenever possible, Sir William Morris made a point of personally meeting his guests. Do you remember the trial by ordeal of this old Isis saloon car? After 93,000 miles, it was bought cheap and submitted to these astounding tests. A series of terrific bumps, in themselves enough to break any car to pieces, were successfully negotiated, and the car was then deliberately soaked with petrol and set on fire. This was got under control with the aid of fire extinguishers, and the remains were then driven through a brick wall. Well, this old Morris survived all these tests, and although looking a trifle battered, was still drivable after its audience. How these Morris cars can withstand such rough treatment was partially solved by the thrilling film Magic in Metal. In this was clearly demonstrated the thoroughness and efficiency with which the parts of Morris engines are produced. Efficiency allied to up-to-date automobile engineering methods were here shown to be the keynote of the huge Morris foundries. Morris manufacturing methods are a guarantee for the cars produced in the Morris factories. Nineteen thirty four, the introduction of specialization. In nineteen twelve, Lord Nuffield laid the foundation of the British motor trade as it is today. First with quantity production. First with a car within reach of modest means. First with nationwide service facilities. And now, first with specialization. Sir William Morris launches a new model, the incomparable Morris 8. Over 150,000 of these cars are now in the hands of satisfied owners, a glittering star in the Morris firmament. 
A further indication of why Morris is supreme was demonstrated by the magnificent spectacle Mastery of Steel. Only the finest steel is used in the manufacture of Morris cars, and this film showed the care taken in the making of a steel panel. This year also saw the creation of that fantasy, the invisible car. Modern life demands a balance of humor, and as the Morris car has brought happiness to thousands on the road, so we hope the invisible car created its moments of mirth. Complete invisibility is obtained by the passengers taking a small amount of harmless chemical, which is made up in tabloid form. On all invisible cars, these will be found in two small boxes under the dashboard. One marked red for invisibility, the other marked green for visibility. One tabloid placed on the tongue renders you invisible. You then get in the car, turn on the invisible switch, and you disappear from human sight. The advantages of this wonderful discovery are unlimited. Let's see something like this in the ditch or behind a tree. We'll just show you what to do. As soon as you see one, put on your invisible switch and his confederate will get the biggest shock of his life. Nineteen thirty-five. Morris sails soaring. Cowley was inundated with orders both from home and abroad. The big docks were working overtime, loading Morris cars for shipment to different parts of the empire. The vindication of specialization. To cope with the increasing sales and service demands, the sales organization at Cowley attached to the staff an aeroplane and pilot which is here. The industrial engines were by now firmly established in an ever-widening sphere of marine and engineering industrialism. Boat builders all over England are standardizing Morris marine engines as power units in crafts of various sizes and design. The almost universal adoption of these engines is in itself a proof of the great reliability for which they are noted. England is a seafaring nation. Every year, increasing numbers leave the large towns and seek rest and recreation on the waters surrounding our island. From north to south, from east to west, boat after boat slides down the slipway. Pleasure craft, those built for general utility or speed, all have their particular uses and the confidence of their designers, who want only the very best equipment for their boats. That they choose Morris Marine Units speaks for itself. Only the fittest survive on the sea. In the boom which is now sweeping over England, Morris Industrial Units are carving for themselves a permanent niche. In the big cities, sweepers powered by Morris engines are to be seen clearing up after the toil and turmoil of the day. The greater volume traffic on the railways throws a big strain on the lines with increased wear. Replacing lines is costly and takes time with consequent disorganization. But modern welding equipment powered by Morris engines is facilitating this work by doing repairs on the rail in situ. Road contractors are making increasing use of Morris engine road rollers for preparing the roads for the motoring traffic of Great Britain. Thus, the ubiquitous Morris industrial units are paving the way for better roads and smoother travel. In the big railway termini, human porterage is being successfully replaced by small tractors embodying Morris industrial units. Fire is a menace to outlying villages and towns. Local authorities are, however, safeguarding their communities with portable firefighting units powered, of course, by Morris engines. 1936. The thoroughness and efficiency of Morris production methods were interestingly presented in an absorbing film, Production Perfected. Although production methods may vary, no car is better made than a Morris, no car is submitted to fuller tests, and no car can give greater satisfaction in use. The popularity of these cars is as great as ever and is evident proof of their inbuilt reliability.
If there was any cause for doubt as to this reliability, the film Sahara was in itself a very complete answer. The trials and ordeals through which this car passed on its epic journey across the Sahara Desert were vividly portrayed, and we cannot do better than quote the closing words of the film. Thus, this product of specialization achieved the object of its journey. Had passed with complete success a grueling test through heat and sand, a test which would have destroyed any car that was not of the absolute best, both in design and materials, and had proved itself magnificently worthy of the factory whence it emanated. Superb examples of British engineering skill, they are an outstanding achievement in the automobile world, and will carry with honour the name of Morris to the furthermost outposts of the Empire. 1937. And so we come to the end of ten years of history. Today, the industrial boom is calling for greater efforts and increased enterprise. In British industry, Morris is to be found right in the forefront, meeting the demands with efficiency, power and reliability. In the railway yards, in the fishing fleets, in the shipping industry, the civil services and the defence forces. Morris cars, industrial and marine units are reliably doing their part, maintaining the prestige and efficiency that has made Britain and British